First, using gestures is the easiest way to navigate on your phone and perform the most frequent actions easily. Actions like going back multiple times, a simple swipe from either the left or the right edge using either hands is super convenient. And it can get even better if you can configure various actions depending on how you swipe. So go to the Galaxy Store and look for One Hand Operation Plus. Download this one from Good Luck Labs and then turn it on in the app. You can now enable left and right handle along with other customizations. Let's go in the left handle and you can see that instantly you can set up three short swipe actions and the list of actions is incredibly powerful. If there's any action you can think of, it's probably here. And here are things that I have set up on my left and right edge basis what I use the most but feel free to configure it as per your usage and you can always evolve over time. You can also set the trigger area, size, position and the handle color as you require. If you've got an S21, chances are you'd be taking a lot of photos and that's when you require an impressive photo editing tool like the Adobe Lightroom. It's got a bunch of effects and tools like cropping, profiles, auto adjustment, light and color effects and multiple presets that you can apply. Presets are clubbed under various styles and depending on the photo, you can try and see which one looks best. But of course, the app gives you complete manual control over how you wish to edit your photo. Whether it's light effects like um, exposure, contrast, highlights, or white balance effects like temperature, tint, and saturation, or even color grading. There's definitely a learning curve with the app, but again, there's also a learning section that helps you understand what kind of photos to take and how to treat them. So you can start being more professional with your photos and given the S21's camera, I think there's a lot of reasons for you to do that. And guys, before we move on, I'm trying to reach 300,000 subscribers and you hitting that subscribe button and that bell notification icon can really help me get there quickly. So it'll mean a lot to me if you could do that. And now let's move on. Next, if you go into gallery and you just want to see the videos that you've taken, you'd have to go into menu on in the bottom right corner, tap on videos. And the list of videos that you see is not categorized. It's just all videos sorted by how recently they were taken and that's it. You can get lost if there are too many videos in here. But if you go to the Galaxy Store and then you search for Samsung Video Library, install it and then you use that app, you'd find it to be a lot more convenient to access and find videos. First of all, you obviously see only videos, but in a thumbnail style that makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for. There are other views available, but I find this one to be the best. Next, you can then tap on a video and it instantly plays right up front at the top like a preview. Of course, you can open it in full screen. And unlike the gallery, you can now see your videos as per the folders that they were in that makes it a lot easier too. Next, Sound Assistant allows you to customize your audio experience. First of all, it changes how your volume panel looks and functions and gives you the option to customize the colors basis your preference. So you do have a couple of color options within the volume panel and then you can just choose what you like. Also, you'll be able to customize or preset the volume of each app before you launch it. So you can choose the app, set the volume and forget about it. If you want that your phone's media volume should also go mute when you mute your phone, you can do that by turning on media manner mode. More importantly, if you want to be able to change music tracks by long pressing your volume button, you can easily do that from within advanced settings and turning this setting right here. The volume panel also gives you quick access to equalizer settings, allowing you to quickly toggle between different sound effects if the need be. So you can access your equalizer presets, change, or maybe not, and that's that. Lastly, there are a limited number of clock styles available on your always on display and lock screen, and it can be fairly limited or boring. And if you go into your lock screen settings, then clock style, and then choose, let's say, always on display, you will see how many clock styles really exist and there aren't too many options. So if you go into Galaxy Store and install clock face, now when you go into your clock settings, you would see that there are a lot more clock faces that you can choose from. And it's actually quite nice. The library is pretty full and colorful, and you can create your own clock style if at all you're interested. And that's it guys, those were five essential apps for the Galaxy S21. I'll be soon doing a video on talking about some more apps that you should get for the S21, so stay tuned. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification icon.